Johnny Mac with your daily comedy news. Before I get distracted, some good TV tonight. Nick Kroll's Little Big Boy, new special hits Netflix. Nick Kroll's also on Late Night with Seth. But keep an eye on this one on Jimmy Kimmel Live, Tracy Morgan, OK, and David Letterman making a late night appearance. I will have to set the DVR. It was a big, big article in the Wall Street Journal over the weekend. The headline, Netflix reduces payments for comedy specials in some new deals. This is major because for a few years there, the comedians were getting redonkulous money from Netflix, like off the charts. And I'll talk about that in a second. The journal writes, streaming company to pay about $200,000 in two-year licensing packs instead of making more costly outright buys, comedians face higher production costs. So two hundred grand sounds like a lot of money, but when you used to get $20 million? Yeah. In recent months, Netflix has started licensing new specials from some comedians for two years for about two hundred grand, rather than buying them outright, which is more expensive. Previously, many comics received a lump sum payment, often as much as a million dollars, that helped pay for production costs. The journal writes, Netflix has invested heavily in comedy programming, turning itself into one of the leaders in the genre. Its lineup includes stand-up specials from, and this is just a random list, from the likes of Fire Island writer Joel Kim Booster, as well as Taylor Tomlinson and Saturday Night Live writer Sam Jay. Now, let me jump in here. I know you know who those three people are. Do you think if I walk down the street and I ask 10 people, hey, do you know who Joel Kim Booster is? And I don't go, remember that movie Fire Island? If I just go, do you know who Joel Kim Booster is? They're not going to know. They're not going to know Taylor Thomason. They're not going to know Sam J. Weird choices there for the journal to highlight because, I don't know, you could have said Pat Oswalt, top of mind, special last week, or Dave Chappelle. <laughs> He's kind of famous. The journal continues, many comics such as Ali Wong and Hannah Gatsby have received career boosts from the success of their Netflix specials. That is true. The biggest Netflix comedy stars, such as Chris Rock and Dave Chappelle, can be paid tens of millions of dollars for a special. Whitney Cummings is among the comics who have struck a two-year licensing deal with Netflix, according to people familiar with the agreement. Talent agents said Netflix is willing to pay top dollar for comedy specials in recent years, even for those from lesser-known comics, which kept rival streaming services from nabbing that content. The change in deal structure could open the door for other streaming services such as Peacock or Amazon or, let me throw in there, Fox Nation. You know, they've got that new Roseanne special for some reason. So pretty interesting there. Very interesting to me personally that the Deep Pockets days are ending. When I was towards the end of my run at a previous job, the Netflix money was starting to be thrown around. And I remember unnamed executive asking me to get a very famous comedian to do a show for us for free. And I was like, really? Because Netflix will give a famous comedian $20 million and I'm going to what? Tell you I'll run promos for you? It's hard to compete with money. Speaking of money, Kevin Hart... He's been talking about money. He has some sort of deal with a bank. The bank can afford to pay for a commercial. Famous bank that you've heard of. Kevin Hart's out doing financial stuff for some reason. And Yahoo recapped it. And Kevin said one of his first major investments was his first comedy special, Laugh at My Pain, quote, which I funded and presented theatrically. I took the tour of money that I made and I said, you know what? I'm going to invest in this and put it out because I feel like it can make a bigger return. It was about $750,000 to produce and put out. And I think I made nine or $10 million. I received more than five times the money I invested. In my mind, I'm like, all right, this puts me in a better position to navigate my corporate and company structure. Kevin had some financial advice. He said, it's about understanding the investment in the world of interest and savings. It's not about putting your money in a bank account and letting it sit there. It's about putting your money in a bank account to make it work. How do you make your money work? The key is understanding the world of the economy and putting your money in safe stocks that you can sit, watch, and let grow. There's such a large world that's attached to finance. And the biggest piece of information that I can give college students today is to outsource the information because it's not going to be given to you. We have to cure the financial illiteracy that we're suffering from. It's not just the work that I'm doing, but it's the work you also have to do in just being ambitious enough to find that element. Non-financial news from TMZ. Trey the Truth is making sure Dave Chappelle stays shining during his stand-up gigs. Trey has hooked up Dave Chappelle with a diamond and gold rendering of his signature logo. The Houston rapper was recently in Los Angeles and he surprised Dave Chappelle with the custom pendant straight from the famed H-Town jeweler Iceman Nick. You ever read an article and kind of have no idea what you're saying, even though the words are coming out of your own mouth? That's this article here. 
TMZ says we're told the piece consists of 15 carats of VS quality diamonds and is valued at 25 grand. It was intended to be a small gesture. Trey noted Dave already has everything money can buy. You pick wisely. Dave Chappelle was floored when he opened the jewelry box and he admitted he didn't have a logo chain in his collection and graciously accepted the chain and pendant combo. Let's click my bookmark here and see what's going on at the Toronto Just for Laughs Comedy Festival tonight. 7 o'clock, JFL Originals. 7 o'clock, Randy Feltface. I think I know where we're going. 7 o'clock, Melissa Villasenor. Boy, I like her a lot too. 7 o'clock, Joel Kim Booster. We just talked about him. 7.30, the Humber College Showcase. That's interesting. What's this? Yuck Yucks, a legendary amateur night. Can you handle four hours of comedy? Students of Humber College School of Comedy perform for your laughs and good grades. Boy, I wish that was on another night. Not that I'm at the Toronto Comedy Festival. I'm home playing Xbox, but were I there, that would be a really cool thing to be at. 8 o'clock, Emmy Blotnick and Mission Totally Possible. 9 o'clock, Dakota Ray Abert, Joel Kim Booster, Nick Thune. 11 o'clock, Nick Thune, Melissa Villasenor, Randy Feltface. Oh, good. So we don't have to choose between things I wanted to see. All right. Let's do Randy Feltface early because I feel like we got to like be awake to watch a puppet do comedy. So 7 o'clock, let's hit Randy Feltface. Uh, 8 o'clock, I don't know. Want to go to the college showcase for a little bit? We'll see a couple kids and then we'll bail. Let's do that. We can grab a beer in the back. 9 o'clock, uh, I don't know who Dakota Ray Abert is. Let's see. Born and raised in Meadow Lake, Saskatchewan, she's performed as an actor and comedian across Canada, the U.S., La Pinera, Mexico, and even Shenzhen, China. I'm always up for seeing somebody new to me, so let's do that. I kind of have a handle on what Joel Kim Booster does, and I got a little Joel Kim Boostered out this summer. There was like a lot of articles about Joel Kim Booster. And then 11 o'clock, let's go see Melissa Villasenor. That would be a good night of comedy at the Just for Laughs Toronto Comedy Festival. We only got a couple of days left here. That festival runs through Saturday. Vulture did their Comedians You Should Know list. One of them is Pat Regan, who's a comedian you should know in the way that ice cream is a treat you should know. Pat's has a famously infectious cadence, examples of which include the increasing cultural penetration and ubiquity of the word famously. It's a sort of unmistakable delivery that made his performance as a twink on a shrimp boat, the single weirdo scene-stealing character in the already deeply quirked-up comedy Search Party. In his stand-up, Regan will drop a mundane celebrity fact and then clarify to audience members like a concerned mother at an anti-library rally, and they don't teach that in the schools. He says, therapy saved my life, but mostly because it's a really good say with me, place to charge your phone. That's a good joke. Regan defies a cliche at every point, proving that you can be hot and also nice, gay and also from Long Island, cool and also obsessed with track and field. He's also written for Hacks. That's a good time. Uh, Let's do a bunch of podcast reviews. I've got a few articles I've been collecting. This first one from Austin Culture Now. I believe it's Culture Now. I'm laughing at my typo here, and it says Austin Culture Mao, as in like Mao Zedong, the uh, Chinese leader, dictator. I don't know what Mao Zedong was, but it says M-A-O here, and I don't think that's what I meant to type at all. Anyway, from Austin Culture, some podcasts that they have recommended Victrola is a monthly smorgasbord of sketches written and performed by some of Austin's best improv comedy talent. Continuing in the tradition of Firesign Theater and National Lampoon, Victrola made a splash at South by Southwest Comedy this year and even recorded an album. I should, uh, where's my phone? I left my phone upstairs. One of you later, remind me to download Victrola. Comedy Wham! This is quite an archive of Austin comedy. Digging in with the earnestness and due diligence of a true fan, Valerie Lopez and team dive deep with a diverse mix of local comics and improvisers. That also sounds good. Storyfellers, the 138-episode strong Storyfellers, is hosted by Pat Dean after former co-host Lane Kurrup followed his dreams of quitting the podcast. <laughs> Dean is a comics comic, literally. His name is tattooed across the fierce fingers of comic Lisa Friedrich. His guests are Austin's finest comics, and Dean is a master interrupter. Lie, Cheat, and Steal tells the hilarious tales of human beings at their most dishonest, delusional, and desperate. Have you ever tried to convince someone that you were Robert De Niro so that would give you 30 grand? Have you ever tried to sell a car that doesn't exist? Or maybe you just defrauded the McDonald's Monopoly game out of 20 million bucks. If you've done anything like that, Lie, Cheat, and Steal will probably do an episode about you. Road Podcast is a You Are There weekly dive into the van with the altercation punk comedy tour headliner J.B. Haberstadt as he zigzags the world chatting with his fellow comedians. Why Aren't You Screaming? Comedians Vanessa Gonzalez and Michael Folk share their tales of life in comedy and ask the important question, Why Aren't You Screaming? 
Help Wanted. Neurotic comedians and self-improvement addicts Valerie Knees and Regina Soto scan the self-help aisle or interview an expert who knows more than they do about the challenging topic. Leading the Blind. Wondering what a Korean stand-up looks like? So do Austin Comics' Jared McCorkle and Ariel Norman. They interview top comics in Austin around the country, picking their brains, etc., etc. The CBC also had some podcast recommendations. Off Menu. This one I knew about. In this food podcast, host Ed Gamble and James A. Castor invite guests to create their dream menu. The CBC recommended the episode with comedian Jamali Maddox, who makes a peculiar choice for his main course, alligator cheesecake. He has eaten that in New Orleans. They also recommended We Got This with Mark and Hal, their guest, SNL comedian Bobby Moynihan. They have a discussion about who is the best Sesame Street character. And the recently mentioned James A. Caster, he's got yet another podcast. This from Chortle. This new podcast will revolve around his undercover cop alter ego, Pat Springleaf, who first featured in his 2014 stand-up show, Recognize. A. Caster said, I know how to host podcasts. I've hosted podcasts about easy things like music and food. That's a stroll in the park. Also, they're very boring things. No one really knows what to talk about those things. And yet I've made them a hit. So I thought if I could sell chats about poppinoms... Imagine how much of an audience I can get when talking about the world of crime, the criminal underworld, drugs, murder, violence, robbery, lies, and porky pies. Springleaf is described as a dark but dumb comedy about an undercover cop with a heart of gold and is based on the recordings Acaster said he made while wearing a wire 24-7, 365, 366 in a leap year. Springleaf will launch soon at springleafpodcast.co. And that is your comedy news for today. Follow the show for free on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your shows. See you tomorrow.